Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. We're getting in the time machine, Ed. We're going to 1986, and we're going to look at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle lovers. <laughs> but before we do, what's up? This is uh, probably the one time in Kayfabe uh, history where I don't feel like uh, I'm, I'm outshined <laughs> by this subject matter. Red Room Issue 1, coming out in May 2021. Uh, you could reserve your copy right at this moment, just like thousands of cartoonist kayfabe listeners have done. Well done, kayfabers. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Uh, there is a link tree in the description below this video where you could get to all this stuff. Uh, and you want to you want to go to the link to the Fantagraphics website, put in your reservation. It's going to let us know how many of these suckers to print up. My stuff historically uh, goes out of print really, really fast. If you want to hit my Patreon up, patreon.com slash edpiscor. I have the strips up there ahead of time. Uh, for the early adopter, you can read the whole comic. Uh, two issues are up there right at this moment. I put up new strips every Tuesday. So hit those links, get the comics, enjoy. You can find more of my work at patreon.com slash jimrug. Lots of original art, lots of comics to read, behind the scenes stuff. And I am starting a comparison series of Street Angel's Dog and uh, the first Street Angel's Dog. So when I started at Image Comics, this was the first Street Angel story that I made, trying to be uh, traditional, you know, ink on paper, digital colors. As I kept making Street Angel comics, this one just never got printed. Each new comic was a little better than, the, than this one. Uh, my last complete comic was Street Angel's Dog for their free comic book day. I rewrote it, I redrew it, and now I'm comparing those pages side by side on Patreon, so you can find that at patreon.com slash jimrug, along with a lot of my other work. Jim, you got me up at 6 a.m. to start recording, <laughs> and why, why are we not reading OMAC number one? Yeah, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole this week, Ed. I was looking up something, and I started pulling out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle imitators. Uh, we looked at Amazing Heroes from 1986. They would do preview issues, and they had running jokes about how many of these books were popping up. Uh, some of them were copying sort of the the timing of the of the of the names, right? Preteen, Dirty Jean, Kung Fu Kangaroos. Um, a lot of them. These are all black and white books from this time period, and literally every book here, at least the first issue, 1986. This is the black and white explosion. In a lot of ways, this encapsulates the black and white explosion because it all spun out of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and their success. And these are all bottom feeders, pa parodies of parodies, right? And uh, this Parody, one's... parody implies humor, <laughs> well, and, and almost none of these are uh, funny in any way. That's uh, that's a pretty fair point. This one's good. Boris the Bear's cool. This is interesting because it's one of Dark Horse's first publications, 1986. This is the very beginning of that time period. Also, Rob Liefeld has a very early piece in a Boris the Bear comic. Not this issue, but one of the early issues. Yeah, yeah, he's got a pinup in there. And uh, Boris the Bear, like, I love the aesthetic because... This is like very accomplished uh, black and white 80s boom kind of illustration, and I'm a sucker for it. You know, it's a little wrong, but it's it's also still very good. It's pretty good and some cool panels. You it's, gotta love the bear in the doorway. <laughs> it's kind of classic. This kind of stuff would be in Wizard Magazine as like in like the good and cheap. And when I would see, I'm like, oh, that's fucking badass. But uh, very timely. So like you have to be kind of a comics nerd to even get the references a lot, you know? This is what you see in several of these things where, like, they're bringing in, and it's weird to even say parody. I mean, that's that's Cerebus, right? Know, you yeah. know, it's 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 Usagi, Yojimbo. Uh, but I, I guess that's, I don't know, low low hanging fruit. No, I mean, there there all, are their turtles. This is all low hanging fruit. <laughs> Punching through one no, of their heads. None of this stuff is funny. Uh, it's <laughs> it's it's bottom feeder comics. It's culture vulture stuff. It's it's uh, the popular thing is out there. Let's try to make some money off it. It's bringing no originality. This uh, is probably one of the better series out of all of this run, and it, and it runs quite a ways. I think it goes through a couple of publishers. Yeah, Rick but there might be thirty issues of this. There's a lot. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a bunch of these. Um, here's another one that's, that's kind of noteworthy. This is Nat Rat, and it's Mark Martin. Yeah, who, this is a good one. Um, very good cartoonist. Uh, we've talked about him on the show in the past for various reasons, including working at Tundra. I think he might have been like the first Tundra employee. And uh, might, might have shut the lights out at Tundra, for all I know, but was there for a long time. So this is also a parody of Frank Miller's Dark Knight. You can find lots of those floating around Absolutely. from the, the late 80s and the black and white boom. Yeah. Narrat, to me, it's like, uh, it comes on the heels more of like, um, 
like a Cerebus or a Yusagi or something like that. Uh, it's single character, and, that, and that's what you had basically. It's like if it's one character, it's coming from like the Yusagi bend of anthropomorphism or Cerebus. If you got it, the teams are unmistakable. You know exactly. Try to try to mimic the exact iambic pentameter of uh, yes the title. Um, let's see, and some of these you're gonna see big variation in craft. Some of these are dashed out quick. Like, yeah. uh, I'm going to assume money grab, but in line with the black and white explosion, you know, lots of range and quality from those kind of self-published comics. And it, it is what I love about the black and white explosion is like, you could make one of these for almost nothing. Go to the printer in, in your local town, get the, get the guy you're friends with who draws a little bit, and you could put this together and make your own comics. Uh, pretty cool. They come from all over, too. I think this is one from the U.K., Ah, no, that's California. Cat Ironwood in 1986, but I don't think this is Eclipse Comics. That's interesting. So that might have been right before she joins Eclipse. Dean Mullaney starts Eclipse before Cat Ironwood is part of that. So You see Dean Mullaney in there, too. So this is a very curious uh, Independent comics group. Maybe it's an imprint of... E oh, yeah, here we go. Eclipse Comics. So this <laughs> must have been an imprint of that. And this is kind of funny. This is a uh, reference to Australia, right? It's It's koalas, commando koalas. The first several pages are drawn upside down. Oh, that's funny. Because, you know, it's it's down under, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this see, is that's... a pretty high level of craft. Really nice lettering. Yeah, Eclipse will, will, will bring the ruckus. But, th but that's your level of humor right there, man. It's like, uh, it's not clever. It's not really that funny. Uh, these are cheesy people who make these kinds of comics. Yeah, you look at your koalas, and it's it's a world from the charm of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle designs. The, the artist doesn't want to be doing Commando Koala. They didn't <laughs> learn to draw that good. Another to, to one do of that. Uh, another one of Eclipse's titles: uh, Adolescent Radioactive Black Belt Hamsters. Um, this one is sometimes credited as being like the first, but I don't know how you can tell that. Again, like literally every one of these is 1986. So whoever's just, first, they're all working together. Just salesmanship. I do like the uh, the artwork. Is Parsonovich, I forget his real name, he's working under a pen name, but kind of a distinct style. And uh, these four characters are named after, like, Chuck Norris and Clint Eastwood and stuff. That even spins off into... Uh, Clint the Triumphant, man. This is one of my first uh, This is one of my first couple <laughs> dozen comics, man. My uncle brought that over, had no idea about the references or anything. One of the artists on here is Mike Dringenberg, who yeah. we'll find in, in early Sandman issues. I like his work. Kurt Hathaway he, uh, on the letters. Yeah, Kurt Hathaway, lettered Youngblood, Image Comics, number one. Like, that's really good art, man. Yeah, I like this kind of finishing and art style. I like Dringenberg. I think he did a Doom Patrol issue, yeah. too, that I really... I like his he, line work He did, he did the, next, uh, the, the, uh, the Flex Metallo one. Yes, yeah, I like I like that's one of my favorite art jobs. Um, so pretty interesting stuff there. I actually got this from Hamlin one one year at uh, Heroes Con, and one of the other notes for Radioactive Black Belt Hamsters artist on issue number six, Sam Keith, early Sam Keith art. Poor guy, he just wanted to make comics by any means necessary. It reminds me a little bit of his Hulk fill-in issue, some of these characters, and a little bit of his Alien Earth Wars, because there's kind of like this military character, so you get the high and tight haircut. Um, he's not inking himself. I wonder what that looks like in pencil form. That's really cool. Pretty wild. Yeah, it turned out good. Uh, Mark Baudet doing Miami Mice. And some of this stuff, you know, this is probably more parody than just Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I would say so. <laughs> I, would th I would think so. But the parody part is consistent. And, you know, it's Funny Animals, which in 1986, you're going to get some connection to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in a black and white comic like this. And, I mean, he was directly connected with Mirage Studios, Kevin Eastman. Uh, the the Mirage guys, Von Baudet fans, heavy metal fans, so... Uh, these are kind of neat looking and, and several issues I have like four of these things plus a 3D issue and I don't know there may be several more I wonder when when he hooks up with uh, with Mirage you, you know? see this is different this is Hamster Vice in oh. 3D you see yeah it's a different geez. different product we don't want to Blackthorn blaspheme but, uh, but at least O'Day. it's not making me a liar because it is also 1986 right <laughs> Man, yeah, it's when, ridiculous. When Blackthorn got hold of that 3D technology, yeah, they, they really put everything. it to use. Look at how shit that is. <laughs> it really is. This is some of the stranger 3D printing. Like, I have a bunch of these because I've done 3D work. But the colors, the inks are just, like, 
really out there. Oh, man. Let's see if we make them green, right? <laughs> gerbils and uh, more gerbils. <laughs> Maybe this is a parody of this. I think this one might be the UK gimmick. That could be it. That could be it. Nope. Or, yeah, yeah, this is from the England. Yeah, yeah. It's this so funny because I have these two. Hamden, Connecticut coming out of there. And, you know, there'll, there'll be these glimpses of, like, that's that's solid cartoonish style here. So They sprung for the duotone. Always fun to see duotone. That's keeping in, in tone, in flavor with the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right? If you're going to parody them. Put it this way, Jimmy. See how much you can do. They're putting in some investment. <laughs> Boy, that sound effect feels apt. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's such a strange survey of like what is the cartooning quality of the time. Yeah, and it and it's it's a good cross section of like what you'll find from that black and white explosion. And and there are versions of this at every stage of success in in comics. Like whatever the du jour thing is, you're going to find the analog money grab version of it. It's just uncanny that these are all 1986, dedicated to Eastman and Laird who have led the return of rampant silliness in comics. And That's it, funny. And what's so funny is, like, they really didn't. Like, Turtles comics by Eastman and Laird are pretty earnest. Especially the first, like, 84, 85. Like, maybe once you get toys and cowabungas and pizza parties, it's a little bit more, you know, silly or whatever. And, and look at this shit. Just, just cabbage patch <laughs> bullshit. Like, like, let's just hit it all. Lean into it. I'm, I'm down with that. Lean into it. Why not? These are fun. I like that they're using all of these mechanical fonts. This is what would have been available through, like, uh, Letraset. Look at it. Like, they might have, like, 50% of the Letraset fonts that are available. That's Lee Mars, and she's a, she's a, she's a real cartoonist, man. Like, sh this is one of those unfortunate things where I guess she might have needed a couple bucks or something. Screen tone? Duo yeah. tone? Uh, no, that's screen tone. Yeah, there's even a bunch of these screens. I bet she was, like, uh, did, you know, design paste up she's amazing some kind of thing like, because like she's got everything the, like there's several different tones and all of these the stuff that fonts. she would do in in heavy metal uh it, it would be marker colored and it would be like this hatched marker style that i've never seen anywhere else she's she's a really good cartoonist that's interesting i don't i don't i didn't even know that's who drew this i just um, it, yeah so I, not the whole thing i think these are individual strips or something I don't know. I'm I'm pretty impressed by it though because at a glance this feels dashed off, and then once I start looking, there's a lot more to it. And that looks like it could be an American flag, yeah, Reuben well, flag well, reference, which is a funny part of these books. Is like they're all just referencing everything, you know, whatever they can fit in there. It's not like it's just uh, limited, limited to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Wow, Blackthorn Publishing. Blackthorn has three or four of these. I guess Eclipse has a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. You put out that hamsters one, and it, it, that one proved successful. So, like, why not have a koala kangaroo gimmick or whatever the fuck? How absurd! Like, Amazing Heroes was spot on whenever they were just going through and pointing out literally a dozen of these things. Yeah, I it's mean, an embarrassment. Like, like if I participated in something like that, I would be totally embarrassed uh, because it's just, it's so on the surface, like, so you, many of you these. just, I don't even know which purpose? ones to point to. Uh, I would say this, if, if you're watching this at home and you're like, uh, I'd like to see some of these turtles ripoffs, go find yourself a 50 cent box because they are rife with this stuff. I was going to say, just pause the video because That's the, probably the, true. the kayfabe effect is very real, but don't feel any urgency to go out and buy uh, half this stuff. Mark Martin is dope. Uh, I, I think these Mark are probably two, is dope. two of the better, uh, you know, the better comics to come out of this this sort of movement. Um, I don't know that any of them are overly satisfying as comics. It's fun for me. Like this is something I should bind as like a hardcover book. Just bind them all together as this chunk of 1986 history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but man, just parodies of parodies of parodies and. As you say, Ed, I'm I, I, I'm pretty glad that I haven't done one of these. Although now it would be a totally different game to to look at a, a turtles parody at this point. It absolutely would, man. <laughs> like all the references would be gone, and it's like there's no point. Uh... It's hard for me to believe that this is all 1986 too. That, that's really the part that's just impossible. Like everybody saw the turtles and were like, a lot of I'm gross... doing it, man. I can do, we, we could sell some of these. <laughs> a lot of gross people 
got the same idea at the same time. They really, really, uh, really did. <laughs> I mean, like, think of all the successful comics that are out there. Even in the early 90s, Speculator Boom, whenever you see all those parody comics, it's not like they all honed in on one. <laughs> you know, it was all like, here's a Spawn parody, here's a Dragon parody. These are all just turtles. It was a phenomenon. Yeah, it, it was a phenomenon, and hopefully that's what this video illustrates, is how strong that phenomenon was. And uh, certainly a major, major part of the black and white explosion. And probably the collapse of the black and white, the black and white glut. And, and by the way, for every one of these, there might be at least one more oh, yeah. out there. Yeah, there were a couple that I couldn't find. You hit all the big ones, for sure. But uh, yeah, there's definitely a few more that aren't represented here, and maybe... Like you say, maybe maybe two or three times as many out there. Jim, I got to go take a shower. <laughs> Stay favors. Like, follow, subscribe. Hit the bell icon. You can find more of my work at patreon.com slash jimrug, where I am starting a comparison side-by-side -side of Street Angel's dog starting tomorrow. So, Which might be already uh, up. Yes, I guess that's the past. <laughs> uh, Red Room, issue one. Is going to hit the stands in uh, May. It's a monthly comic. Every issue is self-contained. You could pre-order and reserve your copy at this moment, just like thousands of Kayfabe uh, subscribers have done so. Thank you for that. Uh, I have a link tree in the description below where you could get there. You could also get to the uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor, where I'm serializing these comics ahead of time. And that first issue is up there. So is the second. And uh, new strips go up every Tuesday. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have coming out in 2021. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Jimmy, give them the merchant orders, man. We're going to be on our way. Read more comics. But not necessarily these ones. <laughs>